Here's your data from the dilution gauging that you carried out at Croden Great Brook on the 8th of October. The first thing you should do is to look at the actual traces. So if you click on the tab for comparison of traces, we can see I've offset these so they're not on top of each other. So I've just added a bit to this one and this one so it separates them out. And we can see that uh, the shape of the curves is similar. It's also the sort of shape we'd expect goes up steeply and then comes down slowly. There's no double peaks, there's no uh, dropouts or missing bits in the data and we do have the connectivity returning back, back down to background. So we've captured the whole of the peak. So there's the whole of the peak and um, there's no double peaks or anything that would suggest there's been a mistake in the way it's been done. Uh, this one is actually a bit noisy um, this will be because the probe has come out of the water as the turbulence of the water will have made it just pop out of the water they're um, fairly buoyant and unless they're weighted down they might come out of the water and that seems to have happened on these occasions where the kind of two dropped to zero it's not happened very much so it probably hasn't made much difference but we can look at that we do the calculations to work out the discharges and compare them so we go to the data the green boxes uh, you need to fill these in, you need to get these answers and um, broken the calculation down into steps for you and uh, well you need to write in the green boxes. First of all you see you've got time here and then you've got the conductivity. The conductivity needs to be converted into a measure of concentration, concentration of salt because you added salt now uh, there's a linear relationship between the conductivity and the concentration of salt and that's been worked out for you. Um, the conductivity meter has been calibrated in the lab with some different salt concentration standards and we end up with this relationship, a slope of 0.4 and a very small offset. So to use that you need to conductivity multiplied by the slope plus the offset. Okay, the calculation order is correct, so we don't need to put a brackets around it. But you could put a bracket around the multiplication, but it's not necessary. And then double click on there. What we also need to do is to make sure that we're always referring to these constants, slope and the offset, so need to put a dollar sign <coughs> in front so when they're copied down they'll always refer to the correct cell. Let me try again. There you go. So that's your concentration worked out from the conductivity which is what you measured. This cell here is giving you the average sodium chloride concentration. So the average baseline. The baseline you can see is here, the constant baseline and um, could have taken a single value of it but quite often there's a little bit of noise with it going up and down so it's best to take an average of some number of measurements during the baseline period before the injection. And that's what's gone on here so the first 17, 18 measurements have been averaged to give you the average baseline concentration. Now, uh, in order to work out the discharge, we need to first of all work out the area under the curve, and then part of that area under the curve is as a result of the baseline conductivity. So we need to work out the area under the curve and also the area due to the baseline conductivity. Part of that calculation will be the baseline conductivity itself which is this number here, the average baseline. So if we do that then the area under the curve is going to equal the sum of all of the concentration measurements.
if you imagine each of those concentration measurements as a small column in a histogram, um, then the area is going to equal the addition of all of those columns, but you need to multiply by the width of the column. The width of the column is the time step, which is actually the sampling interval. So between the first and the second reading, there's two seconds. So that concentration applies for a two second period. So that's the, the interval. Um, so it's the sum multiplied by the interval. If you like, it's the, the concentration multiplied by the interval each time and then added together. But of course that's the same as adding them all together and then multiplying by the interval, which is easier to write down. So the area under the curve is 3.746. Remember the units for that on the y-axis would have grams a litre, not milligrams. So the units are grams per litre, because it's grams per litre on the y-axis. <coughs> the y-axis in grams per litre and the x-axis in seconds. So the area, any area on a graph like this will have units of grams per litre seconds. There we go, grams per litre seconds. The baseline conductivity is this number. That's the average baseline conductivity, so we can enter that. Now we need to work out the area that's due to that baseline conductivity. Well, that's the whole period in which the measurement was made. So the number of seconds in which the measurement was made multiplied by the baseline conductivity. Again, if you look at the diagram, so... Um, in this case where it's drawn just above the baseline. We've got the whole area under the curve, which is the area underneath the blue line, but if you imagine this line being extended all the way across to here, the rectangle underneath is the area, the amount of area that's due just to the baseline, and we have to subtract that from the total area in order to find the area of the peak. So the area due to the baseline conductivity, again let's just make sure the units are right, they should be not milligrams a litre but grams per litre, grams per litre seconds. So the area due to the baseline is going to be That's the number of samples, if we multiply that by the time step, that gives us the whole time period of the sampling. Um, and then we just need to multiply that by the average baseline conductivity. So that's the area due to the baseline conductivity. That's the total area under the curve. What we're interested in is the area that, of the peak. So just the area that results from the addition of the salt. That's the peak area. And that's going to be the difference between the area under the curve and the area due to the baseline. So we're going to have total area under the curve minus the area due to the baseline. Gives us the peak area. And then Again, let's just make sure those units are right. Not milligrams, but grams a litre seconds. And then to get the discharge, remember we worked through this, you take the mass of salt that you put in, units of that are in grams, so 300 grams of salt, divided by the peak area in grams per litre seconds, and 
if you rearrange the units, we go from grams divided by grams per litre seconds. If you rearrange that, that works out to be litres per second. 200 litres a second and the answer we want actually is going to be in metres cubed a second so we can compare it to the flow metering. Um, all you need to know then is how many litres there are in a metre cubed. Which you think about cartons of orange juice, you should come up with the right number. It's not 10,000, it's not a million, uh, it's not 10, it's not 100. It's a thousand. So 0 0.2 cubic meters a second. Now you need to do the same thing for the data from the other two groups and then those answers will appear in here and then you need to work out the average and the standard error draw it with 95% confidence and then you can make some comparisons of that to the flow metering.